There have been many legends to play the game of Survivor in the US. Players like Rich, Colby, Kathy, and Rupert basically became famous for making Old School Survivor a global phenomenon. Players like James and Stephanie were massive fan favorites during the golden seasons of Survivor. And players like Russell and Johnny Fairplay became some of the most notorious villains in reality TV history. And even in modern Survivor, every once in a while, we get a once in a generation player who you know would have been just as famous as the old school legends had they played during that time period. In the end, the Mount Rushmore of US Survivor, for most people, usually consists of Tony, Sandra, Rob, and Parvati. Australian Survivor has only one-fifth of the amount of seasons that US Survivor has had, with Australian Survivor itself not really counting the first two seasons. But despite Australian Survivor only having six seasons, and only five seasons featuring new players, it has already produced a bevy of amazing characters and players. You have the young Parvati types of Brooke, Flick, and Phoebe being the stars of Season 1, Luke becoming the People's Champion after Season 2, famous Australians and gritty contenders such as Harry, Matt Rogers, and Shane Gold from Season 3, and four, and of course, King George of Bankstown absolutely dominated the screen time this past season. All of these players and more could be up for consideration when it comes to sculpting the Mount Rushmore of Australian Survivor. However, there is one player from the Australian Survivor franchise that has not only a lock on everyone's Mount Rushmore for AU Survivor currently, but if Australian Survivor does go on for as long as US Survivor, I'd be willing to bet a certain model face would still be one of the faces included to represent the franchise, and that man is David Jannat. David debuted on Australian Survivor Season 4, Champions vs. Contenders 2, being placed on the Champions Tribe for his success in the model world. I'm not sure what the talk about David was during the preseason, but I think I can confidently say this. I don't think anyone would have ever guessed that a model type recruit would go on to have two amazing runs and go down as one of the best characters in not only Australian Survivor history, but one of the best characters and players to ever play the game of Survivor across the world. What's going on guys? I'm Flint Masters and welcome to the story of David Janat, aka the Golden God of Australian Survivor. This series will be split into two parts, with part one discussing his run in Champions vs. Contenders, and part two will be about his game in All-Stars. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to YouTubers Pridium and Once Upon an Island for the concept of these story videos. I'm sure if you're subscribed to my channel, you've heard of their channels, but if not, then please give them both a sub, and I'll link both their channels in the description below. One last thing guys, due to copyright, there's only so many clips I can play, and trust me, I would love to add many more clips and confessionals of David during his time in Survivor, but I have to make do with what I got. So with that said, let's go through the gameplay of David in his first Survivor outing, the ups, the downs, and of course, the absolute golden moments from the Golden God himself. Golden God has risen again! <sighs> Believe it or not, we don't hear from David at all in episode 1, which is absolutely hilarious considering he would go on to be a screen hog for basically two seasons straight. Now some of this may have been due to David being on the wrong side of the numbers to start off the game and the editors wanted to protect him. On the Champions Tribe, 7 of the 12 players consisted of people who were champions in Australian sports. So, Steven figured this would be a super easy way to make a majority alliance, calling themselves the Sporty 7. Despite David ironically being one of the most physically fit people on the tribe, he was not part of the alliance since he was a model. The Sporty 7's target going into the first tribal council of the season was Pia, but due to Nova feeling that Anastasia was a much bigger all-around threat than Pia, she got the Sporty 7 to put the votes on her instead. And that tribal, Anastasia is eliminated in a 9-3 vote. Again, it's not clear where David stands on this vote, as he does vote for Anastasia. Did he get a good read from the Sporty 7 that they indeed switched their votes? Was everyone in on a split vote? Either way, David's only invisible episode in his Survivor career ends with him not in a terrible spot, but not in a good one either, as he is down in the numbers, 7-4. to four. In episode 2, we are finally introduced to David as he gives us a background of his life, and we are then shown that he is in fact very tight with Luke, the only returning player on the tribe, and the dynamics in the tribe are very clear. It's the Sporty 7 versus the others. Knowing this, David knew he needed to flip two people to form a new majority. One of those two people he knew he could get was Abby, as she was the youngest female on the tribe and would be the most likely person to fall for David's amazing looks and charming personality. However, the champions win their first immunity challenge and avoid tribal. In episode 3, David's minority alliance continued to look for cracks in the Sporty 7, and after dealing with Nova's commanding personality, David felt like the second person to flip with Abby was now clear as day and that person was Ross Clark Jones. The tribe had discovered that Ross was a free-spirited guy and definitely wasn't the type that liked being told what to do. 
So after the champions lost the immunity challenge, the minority continued to try and persuade Ross and Abby to flip and vote out the weakest member of the tribe in Susie. And at Tribal Council, David goes from the bottom to the top as Abby and Ross do indeed flip on the Sporty 7, sending Susie home in a 6-5 vote. Third person voted out of Australian Survivor. Susie, need to bring me a torch. Another big thing to note this episode is that David and Luke do find the champion's idol. However, since Luke was the one to originally find the clue for the idol, the two agreed that it's his idol. So while David himself doesn't have an idol, his closest ally does, making the two extremely powerful coming out of this tribal, as they're now in the majority and have an idol to work with. In episode 4, we see the fallout from the last tribal council, and it couldn't have gone better for David and his core 4 alliance, as instead of giving fair play to Abby and Ross, Steven and Nova proceeded to berate them for their decision to flip, and due to this, Ross and Abby feel they have no choice but to stick with David's alliance, as opposed to the Sporty 7. And after the champions lose yet another immunity challenge, it gets even even worse, as Steven accuses Abby of being a weak-minded player, which brings Abby to tears. While David and the rest of the tribe defends Abby, calling out Steven for his statement, Nova makes the big mistake of defending Steven for what he said. This is the last straw for David's core alliance, as while Steven obviously was hated for what he said to Abby, Nova was just simply too demanding, and the new Majority 6 not only blindsided Nova, but they blindsided Simon and E.T. as well, as they thought Steven was going to be the boot here. This proves even more that the new Majority 6 want nothing to do with any of the Sporty 7, as Nova is blindsided in a 6-2-2 vote. We start off David's all-important Episode 5 performance on the Contenders Tribe, where Daisy and Sean together find an idol. However, this isn't an idol for the Contenders, it's an idol that can only be used for the Champions. Going back to Episode 4, we saw Geneve find the exact same idol on the Champions Tribe, and she would eventually go on to tell David of its powers in order to build trust. So, wanting an idol for himself, David came up with a plan to get the contender's idol that could only be used for a champion. Feeling that Sean more than likely knew about the idol, he told Sean during the reward challenge that he had the contender's idol, and the two agreed to swap idols come the immunity challenge. However, Jenny wanted to keep the idol for herself, which was a blessing in disguise for David, and for that matter the audience, as David decided to make a fake idol and switch the fake idol with Sean to get the real one. I'm pretty good at crafting. I've been stealing little bits and pieces of string here and there, and I have found the perfect little skull. Little golden skull, legit. Yeah, I'm, I'm a golden god right now. A golden god. I'm a golden god. This moment was truly the birth of David as the Golden God, as we really saw just how innovative and how hard he was willing to play this early in the game. Unfortunately, the champions once again lost the immunity challenge, and despite scare tactics from Steven, insinuating he might have an idol, the tribe ultimately came together to vote Steven out in a unanimous 8-1 vote. Fifth person voted out of Australian Survivor, Steven. That's five votes, that's enough. Steven, the tribe has spoken. Episode 6 now, and David is still in a good spot, though his threat level might be starting to catch up to him, as E.T. and Simon, the two on the bottom, note that he is the unofficial leader of the Majority 6 alliance. At the reward challenge, the champions once again win reward, which is becoming an interesting trend for them, as they had now won 5 of the 6 reward challenges, but had only been the contenders one time in the immunity challenge. And one thing to note when it came to the reward challenges this season, was that the winning team could bring over one person from the other tribe to celebrate the reward with them. And as the survivor gods would have it, the champions choose Sean to come over, leading David extremely worried Sean will call him out in front of everyone, if he indeed realized David's idol was fake. Sean coming across today is total nightmare material. Ooh. Worst thing I could think of, maybe like plane crashing into the ocean, being swimming around with sharks. It's a pretty close second at this point. I'm a little concerned, to be honest. I don't know if he knows that idol is fake. No, I'm not sure Martin can remember to it. Oh. oh man, my eyes were like, bing! Hook, line, and sinker. I think I've gotten away with it. I don't think Sean has any clue that his idol is fake. Once again, the pattern of winning challenges and losing immunities comes to fruition for the Champions Tribe, as they lose their 4th straight immunity challenge, sending them to Tribal once again. And despite David believing this would be a simple split vote on E.T. and Simon, with E.T. being the target, 
David's cocky attitude now was becoming notable to the girls' alliance between Pia, Abby, and Janie, especially after David threw out the idea of blindsiding Pia at the next tribal. But thankfully for David, the tribe plays it safe, and E.T. is sent home in a 5-3 vote. E.T., the tribe has spoken. So going into episode 7, David was in the majority alliance, had an extremely tight bond with Luke, and both of them had an idol. David was pretty much on top of the world, but that all changed dramatically after a tribe swap. Wow, we have seven old contenders, Hannah, Andy, Sarah, Sam, John, Baden, and Daisy, and two old champions, Luke and David. So tribe swap could not have gone worse. It could not have gone worse. Seven to two. Seven to two. I've lost my entire alliance. Luki and I are in a bad, bad position. We need to start making some really good inroads with this tribe. If not, I'm dead man walking, man. Like, ah, oh. it sucks. Despite David being in a very bad spot, the one positive is that he couldn't have asked for a better person to be on the bottom with in Luke. As again, Luke was his number one ally and both of them had an idol. However, since the merge likely wouldn't happen for a while, the pair knew they had to keep their idols for as long as possible and try to find cracks within the contenders, but to no avail. And after the new champions tribe loses the first immunity challenge as new tribes, it becomes apparent to the two that they'll have no other choice but to play both their idols to survive another day in the game. But then, just when all hope seemed lost, the two were given a lifeline by Daisy. You see, Andy knew that David had an idol due to Sean telling him about the idol swap, and he told all the contenders about David's idol, minus Daisy. However, Daisy overheard Andy and was furious that not only was she not being included in the conversations, but since Sean was her closest ally in the game, she lost all faith in Andy that he was telling everyone about his idol. So, Daisy went to David and Luke with a new plan, and that plan was to vote out Sam? The show made it seem like since Sam was Andy's closest ally, and I guess with Andy being perceived as needed for the challenges, it would be best to weaken Andy by taking Sam out. Kind of a similar case to Ethan being targeted to weaken Rob in Winners at War. But in actuality, the reason why Sam was targeted here was due to Daisy having conflict with Sam on the old Contenders tribe. And in general, Daisy saw Sam as a massive threat, but none of that was shown. In fact, nothing about Sam was shown. The only screen time she got all season was David calling her ugly, and she became the first of ever contestant in history to go home without receiving one confessional all season, as Daisy got Baden and John on board to form a new alliance with Dave and Luke, sending Sam home in a 5-2-2 vote. Seventh person voted out of Australian Survivor, Sam. So just like on the old champions tribe, David immediately went from the bottom to the top and once again was in a comfortable position after him and Luke appeared to be two dead men walk in. And to add the cherry on top, with the contenders in complete shambles, Andy attempted to align himself with David and the other contenders blindsided at the vote and Hannah and Sarah threw Daisy under the bus, making her their target now over David and Luke. Like they say, Survivor can change on a dime. At the immunity challenge, the champions once again lose, and the new majority decide to target Sarah, being that she is the weakest person in the minority. However, not wanting to go home without a fight, Sarah continued to throw Daisy's name under the bus, believing the contenders could once again reunite with her out of the game. But after being completely blindsided the last vote, and feeling in serious trouble, Andy, doing whatever he could to stay in the game, told Daisy of Sarah's plan to blindside her to ensure that Sarah's the boot over him. But once word got back to Sarah that Andy had turned on her, she then tried to get him voted out instead, believing he was playing the game way too hard, to which she wasn't wrong about. Yes, believe it or not, three names were on the chopping block, and not one of those names were David or Luke. In fact, their new majority alliance held all the power, and at Tribal Council, David's original plan to vote for Sarah comes to fruition as everyone other than Hannah votes for her in a 6-2 vote. We start off episode 9 on the Contenders Tribe as Sean finally checks out his idol that he swapped with David and comes to the horrifying conclusion that it's not the same idol he gave to David, realizing that David gave him a fake idol. He shared this news to everyone, with Janine confirming that the idol was indeed fake, leaving everyone to realize just how intensely David was playing the game, with even the original champions concluding that David would need to go soon after the merge for being such a huge threat. And then at the reward challenge, Sean tells Daisy that David gave him a fake idol and tells her to get rid of him as soon as possible. Daisy informs Baden what Sean told her, and suddenly, David becomes a new target. 
Like I said, Survivor can change on a dime. Thankfully for David, the champions won their first immunity as a new tribe, and best case scenario, Sean would be the one going home at the Contenders Tribal Council. However, David's game would then take a massive turn for the worst. In a twist, Jonathan informed the others that the champions would witness the Contenders Tribal Council that night. And when it came time to vote, it's revealed that the Contenders won't be the ones voting, and that the champions will be voting to kidnap someone to join their tribe. And of course, after everything Sean told them, combined with the fact that he was a super strong physical player, even David accepts his fate and votes for Sean to join the champions tribe. Sure, that's four votes. That's enough. Take off your old buff. Toss it in the fire. Uh, come get your new one. You're now a champion. Thanks, bud. It's episode 10 now, and the stage is set for the season-long storyline of David versus Sean to unfold. Sean not only tells Daisy the whole story about how David gave him a fake idol, but he also tells her that the champions were unbreakable on the new Contenders tribe, and the Contenders have to stick together to have a chance. So, the Contenders are now fully back on board to work with each other and take David out of the game. It also becomes very apparent to Luke and David that Sean is bringing the tribe back together and they may no longer have control over the majority alliance on the new champions tribe. And at the immunity challenge, the champions go back to their losing ways, losing the immunity challenge despite now having Sean, sending them back to tribal council. The easy plan for the original contenders is to split the vote on David and Luke, with David being the main target. And with Hannah being sick, this gave them an easy fake out target for David and Luke. And unfortunately for the two, they absolutely believe that the plan is to unanimously vote out Hannah and don't think they need to play their idols. But right before Tribal, they're given a lifeline when Andy tells the two of the contender's plan to split the votes, but he's willing to side with them tonight to blindside Daisy, still not trusting her after she originally blindsided Sam. So going into Tribal, David and Luke have absolutely no idea what or who to believe. So, the two have no choice but to play their idols to save themselves, and it looks like David is going to win his battle against Sean, as that's who he and Luke vote for. But the contenders actually split their vote on David and Hannah instead of David and Luke, saving Sean, and on the revote, Hannah is the one to go home. I'm not sure if splitting the vote on David and Hannah was always a plan, or the contenders were in fact worried that Luke also had an idol, as opposed to Hannah. But either way, this obviously ended up being the correct move for the contenders, as if they did split on David and Luke, Sean, who was the heart and soul of the contenders, would have been idled out of the game. So after one of the most chaotic tribal councils in Australian Survivor history, David comes out of it in quite an interesting spot. He and Luke no longer have idols, burn Andy's trust, and are now in a very dangerous position. But with Andy voting for Daisy at Tribal, this once again puts a target on his back. Thus, he may have no other choice but to work with David and Luke. We get the fallout from Tribal, as David and Luke are devastated they didn't vote for Daisy, and Sean finally reveals to David that he knows the idol is fake, making it clear to David that he is the next to go, and the only thing that could really save him was another idol. And after the champions win the reward challenge of episode 11, they for some reason allow David to go first into the Survivor Cinema, and again, Feeling desperate, David had to do whatever he could to find an idol, leading to one of the greatest scenes in Survivor history. Uh, uh, the hunger is getting to me. Mm. We're thinking about you all oh, the time, up. and we're so mm. super proud that you're still in the game. Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, they gonna be stuck that did this. <laughs> Oh, the golden god is back! Simply iconic, as now David, hardly given a crap about his family video or the mess he made, had what he needed the most, and that was a hidden immunity idol. One other thing to note about David here during this episode was that after the reward challenge, David was able to tell Simon that he and Luke were in serious trouble. Knowing this, the champions debated throwing the immunity challenge since they had the numbers and would protect Luke and David. And at the immunity challenge, it looks like that is indeed the plan, as the champions don't put up much of a fight, keeping David safe, as the champions win immunity. So once again, David's wild ride in Survivor takes yet another crazy turn. Going into the episode, he no longer had a strong alliance or an idol. And coming out of the episode, he once again had an idol and had his old champions try protecting him, as a contender did indeed go home, giving the champions no reason not to continue throwing immunity challenges until the merge. But after the episode 12 reward challenge, the champions once again win and select to kidnap Harry, who spills the beans on everything happening on the contenders tribe. 
This is one of those good news, bad news moments for David, as it's good news that the champions are incredibly tight, so tight that they're willing to throw challenges to protect him and Luke. The bad news though, is that with the contenders realizing Harry and Matt were in trouble on the other side, they knew they needed to throw the next immunity challenge to protect the two, especially since they had the clear majority over David and Luke to split the vote in case one of them had an idol. So going into the immunity challenge, both tribes were willing to throw the challenge, but thankfully for David, Baden wasn't in on the plan and ends up winning the immunity for the champions. Now, while David could have saved himself with an idol had the champions gone to tribal, he more than likely would have lost Luke, which obviously would have been detrimental to his game. But David doesn't have to worry about any of that. And for the first time all season, the champions take over the numbers in the game as Matt is sent home, giving the champions a 7-6 edge over the contenders. So going into episode 13, the final episode of the pre-merge, David was unbelievably guaranteed to make it to the merge due to having an idol. However, best case scenario would be for him and Luke to both make the merge and for another contender to go home, giving the champion seven to five numbers going into the merge. However, unfortunately for Ross and all the champions, he fractures his ankle during the immunity challenge, forcing him to be medevaced from the game, making the numbers even going into the merge. So David had one of the wildest pre-merge rides in Survivor history, but after all the craziness, he was still in a good spot as the two tribes merged on day 29. He still had his idol, he still had Luke, and the champions were super tight. In fact, they are so tight that David enforces the buddy system strategy as he fills in the champions on everything while Luke spies on the contenders back at camp. The plan for the champions is to break up the power duo of Sean and Daisy. However, a couple of bad things happen. First, Daisy finds an idol after she wins the reward challenge to which David suspects, and then Sean ends up winning the immunity challenge. So with Sean safe and fearful of Daisy's possible idol, the champions pick a new target and frankly, probably the target they should have gone with all along in Andy. It's no secret to anyone that Andy had been playing an extremely sloppy and aggressive game and had lied to many people. And this is exactly what the champions proposed to the contenders. But Sean then tells Daisy she should play her idol on Andy since that's who the champions are gunning for and they could idol a champion out of the game. But after everything Daisy and Andy had been through in the game, she was scared of the possibility that Andy would flip to the champion side to vote her out. And lo and behold, that's exactly what Andy does as he once again tries to work with David to vote out Daisy. At Tribal, things go absolutely perfect for the champions and David as Daisy plays her idol out of paranoia and Andy is unanimously voted out of the game, giving the champions numbers once again. However, Andy leaves with a bang at the expense of David. Days I may have cast a vote or two for you. And Dave has an idol. Cheers, guys. It's episode 15 now, and despite David's idol being known to everyone in the game, he's still feeling good about being in the majority alliance and continues to play up the dumb model stereotype he has been all game. At the reward challenge, Abby wins and interestingly chooses John and David to go with her. Talk about two very different personalities. David proposes a final three with the two, stating how unexpected it would be, but this aggressive gameplay once again sketches out Abby, propelling the idea that David is a massive threat that needs to go home soon. And back at camp, Sean reinforces this idea to the champions, to which they strongly consider. So going into the immunity challenge, it ironically comes down to Sean and David, with the loser of the challenge more than likely the one going home. And after an agonizing battle, David outlasts his rival Sean to win immunity. And in a twist, Sean basically has no time to scramble to save himself. And at Tribal, pretty much everyone gets on board to split the votes on Sean and Daisy, leading David to win his battle against Sean as he becomes the first member of the jury. Sean, the tribe has spoken. So going into the final 10, things hadn't looked better for David all game. The champions now had six to four numbers, contenders like Baden had shown interest in working with him and Luke, and of course, he still had an idol in his pocket. Because of all of that, the champions knew the time was now to take him out. This is one of the most interesting episodes in Survivor history, as the entire episode's story was very clear. David was the target for tonight's tribal, and the only question was if he would play his idol or not. I mean, even David's target and Daisy knew, or maybe learned from Andy, that her best bet was to act hopeless all day around camp, which in turn would make David even more confident. The girls' alliance of Pia, Janie, and Abby put their plan into action, telling everyone other than Luke that David was going to be blindsided tonight. This is without question the biggest turning point for everyone in the game. A chance for the contenders to survive another day, it would be a huge resume booster for the three girls, and most importantly, one of the most dominant players in Australian Survivor history would be out of the game. But all of that would go for naught if David were to play as idol. Let's see what happens. If anyone has a hidden immunity idol, you want to play it? Now would be the time to do so. Read the votes. 
David. Fifteenth yeah. person voted out of Australian Survivor, second member of our jury. David? Six votes, that's enough. David, the tribe has spoken. I have. After an insane run filled with many ups and downs, David's game ends the only way it could as he's blindsided in an A2 vote with an idol in his pocket. So let's go over the insane and beyond entertaining gameplay of David Janat in Survivor Champions vs Contenders 2. He started the game on the bottom and immediately went to the top one tribal council later and he was the leader of the dominant champions alliance. He was a part of one of the most popular duos in Survivor history with Luke. He made a fake idol in order to get a real one. He made it to the merge despite entering the swap at a 7-2 numbers disadvantage. His second idol find is one of the best moments ever. He lasted longer than his rival, and in the end, it took an epic blindside to finally take him out. But above all else, David is one of the best confessional givers and most entertaining players in Survivor history, far and away being the biggest character this season, despite finishing in 10th place, and was a basic lock to come back for a future All-Star season, which just so happened to be the next season for Australian Survivor. Yep, another season of the Golden God was immediately coming upon us. And boy, if you think he had a good run this season, just wait until you see his performance in All-Stars. Thank you guys so much for watching part one of the story of David Janat in Australian Survivor. I'll leave a link to watch part two in the video and the description and pinned comment below where I'll be taking you through his journey in All-Stars. If you like what you see, then smash that like and subscribe button and comment down below if you'd like to see more story videos about foreign Survivor players. Once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.